In this video, I want to walk you through how you're going to analyze the data you collected for our toy car lab. And remember, in our toy car lab, we're basically investigating a particular kind of motion, something that was moving in a straight line at a constant speed. And for our lab, we just used toy cars that either moved in different directions in a straight line uh, and also moved at different speeds. In order to investigate the motion, we specifically looked at the relationship between the position and time of the car moving at a constant speed. To do that, we collected at different times where the car physically was. So like what was its position along, along a metric measuring tape? And we did that for six to eight different data points. In order to collect that data, you either use cars out in the hallway to measure where the car was at specific times or what its position was, or you used YouTube videos and pausing the video allowed you to figure out the position of the car at specific times. You collected position and time values for either just a red or a blue car, or you did a red car, a blue car, and a third unique trial. So the question is, once you have that data, what are you going to do with it? So let's just take one example data set and talk through how you're going to do the analysis. To analyze that further, the first thing you're going to do is graph that data. To make that graph, we're going to put the position values on the vertical axis and the time values on the horizontal axis. Remember, the variable or symbol we use to represent position is x, and the variable or symbol we use to represent time is just t. So here we have our position versus time graph. Once you make your position versus time graph, the first question you want to answer is, what's the shape of that graph? What's the pattern we see in our graph? So to help you think through, like, what are the common patterns that come up over and over again when we do investigations in physics or in science in general, when we find out how one variable affects the other? Uh, you should have a, a patterns in nature reference sheet, and there's a poster in the classroom. But here, they're right on the slide here. These are four different types of trends that come up over and over again. When we graph one thing versus the other, oftentimes we get linear relationships. Sometimes they're curved up. We call those top opening parabolic relationships. Sometimes they're curved, but kind of like on the side. We'll call that a side opening parabolic relationship. Or sometimes as one variable increases, the other one decreases over time. And we call those hyperbolic relationships. So if we go back to our specific graph, our position versus time graph, and we look at this, our data, it's not perfect, but it looks fairly linear. The trend is linear and increasing. And now that we've identified that, we also want to go the next step, which is writing the equation for that trend. Well, if this is a line, all lines will follow. This is the slope-intercept form of a line. So you guys should remember this from math class, that the general form of the slope-intercept form of a line is y equals m times x plus b, or y equals mx plus b. Well, this is in the general form for any line. We want to essentially take this, and we want to substitute in for each of these four letters specific information from like the variables used in the graph or the specific values of the slope in the y-intercept. So let me take you through a process to show you how to do that for this specific graph. Then you're going to go back and do that for all of your data once you graph it. So the first step, if we have a linear relationship, <clears throat> is just writing down the slope-intercept form. So step one, write it down. y equals m times x plus b. m, remember, represents the slope of the line, and b represents the y-intercept of the line, where it crosses that vertical axis. Step number two is you're going to replace y and x, right here in the equation, with symbols that are on your y and your x-axis. Well, in general, you know, this is the y-axis, but what do we graph on the y-axis? We graphed position values, so we want to replace y with a symbol which represents position. And in physics, we just use an x for that. So instead of y, we put x. And on the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, we graphed our time values, and we're just going to substitute t because the time values were on the x-axis. So we rewrite the equation, now replacing y and x with x for position and t for time. So this is starting to look a little bit more like the data and the graph that we have in front of us. So the last step is going to be replacing the slope, the m value, and the y-intercept, the b value, with numbers and units. Because this graph has a specific slope on value and units, and the same thing for the y-intercept. So let's start with the slope. Well, the general 
equation for a slope is, you guys have heard this before, rise divided by run. So we have to pick two points on our line of best fit and figure out the steepness, the rise divided by the run. So in order to do this, uh, with experimental data, when you add a line of best fit or you graph it in a computer or in Logger Pro, a specific software that we'll use this year, when it adds a line of best fit, that line of best fit may not go through all your data points. You're not gonna have perfect data. It's not gonna be perfectly linear or perfectly hyperbolic. And so some of the data points won't fall in your line of best fit. To calculate the slope, to be as accurate as possible, you wanna only choose points that actually fall on your line of best fit. So when I look here at the fourth second, that's pretty close to our line of best fit. And at the eighth second, those two data points fall on our line of best fit. So let's use those two points to calculate the slope. So looking back over at our data table, at the fourth second, it was at a position of 115 centimeters. And at the eighth second, it was at a position of 235 centimeters. So to take the rise divided by the run, let's figure out the rise first. So from 115 centimeters up to 235 centimeters, that's a rise of a positive 120 centimeters. And the run is how far you go over horizontally. You're going from four seconds to eight seconds. So if we now take the rise of 120 centimeters divided by the run of four seconds, we get 120 centimeters divided by four seconds. The slope, 120 divided by four is positive 30. And the units are centimeters divided by seconds. So the slope of our line is positive 30 centimeters per second. So we could just plug that in in place of M because that's the specific slope of our graph. The other thing we need to do is estimate the y-intercept. So where is this line approximately crossing our vertical axis, which is our position axis? So it looks like it's really close to zero. And actually, when we look at it, we did measure, the, in this case, the car did start at a position of zero at zero seconds. So we can just say that this, the y-intercept is zero centimeters. That's where our line crosses our position axis. So this is what our equation looks like. We can put in 30 centimeters for each and every second for our slope. Instead of our y-intercept, we just put zero centimeters. Notice the slope M and B, well, the slope M and the y-intercept B are replaced with two things, both a number and units. So it's 30 centimeters per second, and the y-intercept is zero centimeters. Now, after all those steps, we have an equation which actually describes the motion of our red car. We've got a graphical way of describing that, a graphical representation of how position it changes over time. And this equation is an algebraic representation of how position changes over time. We say that position is equal to 30 centimeters for each second multiplied by time, as measured in seconds, plus zero centimeters. So now that you know how to graph it, and now that you know how to turn a linear graph into an equation, what you're gonna to do to analyze your data is you're gonna take all of your data sets and make position versus time graphs, and then write the, the equation from, for each of those lines for each of your trials. If you just did one trial, you're gonna make one position versus time graph and write one equation. But if you did one set of position time values for the red car, and another one for the blue car, and let's say another one for a unique trial that your teacher gave you, you're gonna actually make three different position versus time graphs. But um, I want you to put them on the same axes. And so you can make one position versus time graph, scale it so you can fit all of your data on there, and you're gonna graph all three data sets on here, and then write the equation for each of those things, and then write the equation like here, this equation, let's say next to the line which that equation came from. Once we do all that data analysis, we'll get together and talk about what does all this stuff mean and what more can we learn about how these things can help us understand things that move in a straight line at a constant speed.